Hi, I'm Norman Pirola from uh, Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk ab about joinery today. Uh, I've recently been asked about the different forms, the different types of joinery used to assemble furniture, and it's, uh, it's an excellent subject actually. It's quite a lengthy subject because if we delve into each of the types of joinery in detail, it could take uh, several hours. What I'd like to do today is cover the, uh, the different groupings of, uh, of uh, joints and their application in furniture making. And I'll begin with uh, a frame and panel. I have this example here, the sample I've created, and this is widely used in, uh, in door panels and furniture construction and cabinet construction to have a, a floating uh, panel within a, within a frame. The frame is rigid, but the panel floats, and this is to avoid any dimensional instability because the actual, uh, all the wood moves, and especially this inner panel, this moves considerably. So to avoid it tearing apart the frame, we, uh, we call it a floating panel and it floats in and there's a little bit of uh, excess space between uh, both the, uh, the sides and the top and the bottom. Mostly the sides, actually. The larger gaps, because that's uh, the, the, the wood moves along its uh, grain from side to side and not so much uh, at all from the top and bottom. So that, uh, this is a good example of uh, frame and panel construction. And I purposely created this sample to, uh, to uh, demonstrate that. The, uh, the actual joinery is, uh, is mortise and tenon with a, with a, a short tenon within a, within a groove. The idea behind that is to have a groove running along the whole length of the, uh, the style. And then the, uh, the rails with the tenon stub will fit right into the, uh, <coughs> that particular groove. So that actually works really well because it covers the uh, extremities of the groove and it also reinforces the joint. Now it's not the, the, uh, the best form of joinery unless you extend the, uh, the tenon within the, uh, the styles considerably. And this is what you should do. You shouldn't just uh, leave the, uh, the top part as, uh, as demonstrated here. Now this, in this example it's, it's a haunched tenon within the uh, style and the haunch is to cover the, uh, the groove. So that little portion you see at the very top of the style is actually part of the uh, tenon. And it, it keeps the tenon from twisting and also covers that groove portion that we've just uh, installed the, uh, the tenon within, within the, uh, the style. So that serves two purposes. So it's called a haunch tenon and I'll explain it further in the next example. So since we're on the, uh, the subject of uh, tenons and mortise and tenons, this is the, uh, an example of a haunch tenon. It's a larger example, and this would be the haunch. And what this does is it both reinforces the, uh, the tenon within the uh, mortise and conceals the actual tenon at the very top. Once, I, once I've cut this, I've got a little mark there and I've cut it, so I cut it uh, flush with the top of the, uh, the rail and then uh, you would not see the, uh, you would not see the, uh, the tenon portion. And this, uh, this is a little different. It's a through tenon and it's also chamfered or along its edge, so it's more of a decorative type mort uh, mortise and tenon joint. Here's another example of the same, a haunch tenon. This is all handmade, by the way, and I have uh, it's all marked and handmade, so I haven't really finished it because I use it for demonstration purposes. And it's a haunch tenon as opposed to a straight tenon. Now on the subject of uh, mortise and tenons again, this is a, a different, this is a, an actual uh, full mortise and tenon joint. And I've described that here and this is a, has a, a, a tenon with uh, four walls to fit within a mortise. Now you can either create the tenon first and then fit it to the, uh, and create a mortise afterwards, or create the mortise and fit the tenon in. So there's two schools of thought, two preferred ways, and whatever you're comfortable with. That's another example. So the four walls fit within uh, your house, within the, uh, the actual uh, mortise. And the mortise, uh, the length of the tenon is arbitrary. I mean, within, to make it reasonably long, there's a rule, uh, a thirds rule, and the, uh, the tenon width itself should be two thirds of the, uh, the actual width of the rail. That's uh, preferred. Uh, again, on that subject, 
I have another form of uh, mortise and tenon. This one's wedged. This would have little curves sliced into the, uh, the end of the tenon in a rip format. And then uh, little wedges are inserted in, preferably contrasting in this case. And what that does is it reinforces the, uh, the tenon within the mortise. And it's, uh, it's both structurally strong and, uh, and decorative also at the same time. So used to widely used on, uh, on more high-end furniture, this technique or that example. And this is, uh, we're all familiar with cabinet stands or table, table legs. And this would be an example of, uh, of miter tenons. And it's the reason we, we created miter tenons is to fit both rails within the, uh, within the post or the leg at the same level so they don't interfere with each other. So they're actually mitered. There's still reasonable length on the tenon but they're, uh, they're mitered within so they actually meet at, at the very center and they don't interfere with each other. So that's, uh, that's the, the technique behind that. People always ask, how do, you, how do you get the tenons in there without hitting each other? And that's how it's done. It's done through a, a miter. So I kept that example. And we'll have to move on because I've got a considerable amount of joinery here. And this is uh, this more of a, a dovetail uh, through mortise and tenon. Uh, it's just a different version of, uh, it's a little more decorative and it's a little more intricate. Because I use the same similar woods, you don't actually see it very well, but I'll try to blow it up and, and zoom in on that. Another common form of joinery is dowel joinery. I use this uh, myself in case construction as a, as a, and a follower of uh, Kronoff's techniques and, uh, and philosophy. He used uh, dowels considerably in his case construction, I think exclusively to join the uh, side panels to the, uh, to the tops and the bottoms. So I, uh, I've developed techniques for that, but it's used, it's widely used and has been used in the past extensively over many, many decades to create, to, to join rails and styles. And uh, so there are a countless number of jigs out there you can purchase to line up your, your joinery or you can do it by hand without, without a jig and center the, uh, the hole drill the holes, bore the holes, and join them. So this is an example of a dowel. It's fairly strong, I use it. I don't have any qualms about dowel joinery myself, but some people, they moved on to a loose tenon joinery from dowel joinery. So that's that, I only have one example of that. So I'll move on, speaking of uh, <coughs> loose tenon, I might as well discuss that now. This is loose, loose tenon joinery. I've got these two sample pieces. I do have a specialized setup to create the uh, mortises for the loose tenons. These are purchased in you know, bulk and they fit in and this is uh, so what it does is it creates a rather than have create a tenon attached to a, a rail and then fit it into a mortise which is very difficult uh, unless you're set up with, uh, with a tenoning jig and that sort of thing. This is um, you know, a good alternative is to create a mortise on both uh, components the style and the uh, and a rail and use a, use a pre-created uh, loose tenon to fit them in. Now this one has a slight offset so I need to I need to keep in mind the reference surfaces and there's another example here. This is both cherry and the loose tenon is typically it's compressed wood so what it does is when when the glue is applied it expands and locks in the uh, locks itself in. So this is comparable to uh, through mortise and tenons. Some people don't think so, but it is. It's quite strong and it's used, what's widely used. You probably all heard of the domino joinery system and I don't use that, but uh, you have a different setup to create this. So that's the length of the, uh, the actual loose tenon going through. It's more visible. And uh, again, they're both marked. So, so that's loose tenon joinery. And here's an ex another example of a mortise and tenon. This is a larger, I'm not sure, I can't remember if this is a loose tenon. I don't think so. This began as a, as a square tenon, was rounded over so it could fit into a, a, uh, a rounded mortise. You can see this was probably created on a router table and this is, it's rounded because of the, uh, the router bit. We've had to, uh, I've had to adapt the uh, square tenon and round over the edges so it fits in. So this again, it's another version of uh, what I've just described but the actual tenon is attached to the uh, one of the components, in this case the rail, fits into the style. So this would be for typically for 
st cabinet stand or table construction. So these forms of joinery are very, very common and uh, another form of joinery which I've been uh, talking about uh, quite a bit in my recent videos is the uh, dovetail joinery and I've, uh, I've talked about this at length. I use this in my drawer making. This is half blind dovetails so it conceals the, uh, the joint from the, from the uh, drawer front. This will be the drawer front and you can see an example there. These are all uh, similar type joinery. I, I, uh, I marked them with the different ratios I use, in this case 1 to 6, which is more uh, applicable to softwoods, but I typically use uh, 1 to 7 now. You can go up to 1 to 8 for hardwoods, but I like 1 to 7, it's, uh, it's a compromise between one to, one, 1 to 6 and 1 to 8, and 1 to 8 I find a little bit too steep, uh, so I've uh, settled on 1 to 7. And uh, so these are half blind dovetails and I've talked about them quite a bit in my, uh, my recent videos. Actually I have a whole video on dovetails just uh, a few weeks ago. This is a through dovetail that I also mentioned in one of my uh, latest videos and it's uh, similar to that but we don't conceal the front so you can see the ends of the uh, tails protruding through. It's more of a, in this case it's more of a functional joint rather than decorative, although I've applied some oil just to enhance the, uh, the actual joinery itself. I, I typically use uh, contrasting the drawer front uh, with the sides to, to accentuate the, uh, the dovetail. I was looking for that <coughs> sample of a house to dovetail and, uh, that I just referred to. It's a little more intricate and it's, I've done this, uh, I've created very few of these, but it's uh, very, very narrow pins and they alternate with different lengths. So it's quite uh, decorative and uh, very complex to make. As you can see, I'll expand on that, but uh, the, the inner pins are half the length of the outer pins. And it's uh, the, side, the same applies for the tail. So it's quite complicated and it's purely decorative joint, not necessary. There is no more structural integrity to this than a conventional half point or through dovetail. So I'll leave that here. The other forms of joinery, the common joinery are, uh, are a slip joint. And I have a series of slip joints here. Slip joint I use uh, extensively in my work when I'm creating cabinets for uh, my workshop and my studio and uh, other frames. I use it for uh, attaching uh, or creating frames. So it's actually just uh, a through tenon and it's uh, within, housed within a, uh, a mortise on the other, the opposite uh, component. So that's a slip joint. And here's a better example. This is a better example. This is uh, almost exclusively created on a table stock. They're set up correctly. They're very, fairly rapid to create. And they're incredibly strong because they have such a, uh, a large uh, gluing surface on this side and this side within. So it's a very strong, joint, it's uh, decorative, it's fine for, uh, for most work, unless you're seeking something for a miter corner. So that's another uh, version of the, uh, of the slip joint, it's a double slip joint. Now this is a little more intricate, so it involves, uh, it doubles the, uh, the gluing surface, so that's even stronger, a real, uh, maybe not twice as strong, but considerably stronger than a, a, a single uh, slip joint. So that's, uh, that's an example of that. Fortunately, I've held on to quite a few of these. And my, when I uh, demonstrate joinery, when I'm teaching and demonstrating joinery, uh, I use them extensively. And I'll just pile them up here. Now, another form of uh, miter joinery is, uh, miter joinery is a preferred method to, uh, to hide. The, to, it's a little more aesthetically pleasing on a corner when you're creating a frame a door frame, typically a door frame. So this is a miter slip joint. So this is not only a simple miter, but it's reinforced through that the same technique I've just shown you. It's not difficult to create. It's just a little more, a few more steps on a table saw and you can create the mitered slip joint. So it combines both uh, the, uh, the aesthetic beauty that is decorative and it's incredibly strong. So something you might, wanna, you might want to uh, investigate further in your own work. And uh, so that's a miter slip joint. Another form of miter joint is the uh, miter corner with a through tenon. It's a little more intricate. This is uh, 
Well, the goal here is to, uh, to reinforce the miter because a simple miter, just attaching two pieces of uh, wood along a miter joint is not strong. You have to reinforce it. Now you could simply create a joint and then reinforce it with an external key within a slot. That works too. But if it's integral, you want a uh, through tenon. And this, uh, there's a few more steps again. And that uh, introduces a tenon or through tenon in this case into the joint. So it, it uh, makes for a much stronger miter joint. This one, uh, this one's not glued. And this one's glued, so it's a very similar joint. So it's a miter joint reinforced with a, with a tenon, a through tenon. Again, this is a different type of uh, lap joint, a keyed lap joint. Normally a lap joint that would be a square sides, and this is a keyed lap joint. So if you're attaching a rail to a post, and, and not, a, not at the ends, but in the middle somewhere, then you could use this. It's a little more decorative than uh, simply creating a half lap joint and fitting it in. It also covers the, uh, the joinery itself. It conceals some of it. So that's a good example. And here's a very good example of, uh, of what I just described. This is a dovetail lap, so this is more decorative. Again, it's to attach a rail to a post, not at the top and bottom, but somewhere in the middle. So it's incredibly decorative. So it's essentially a half lap joint, but with this uh, dovetail component. So it's it's, it's decorative. And uh, so this is a uh, this is more of a mortise and tenon. Now this is similar to what I just described, but it's a dovetail mortise and tenon, so it fits through. It's not a half lap joint, but it, it attaches again a rail to a post through a dovetail. So it's a matter of creating the, uh, the dovetail, marking the post out and the, and the following and creating the, uh, the, uh, the opening for the tail. So it's uh, considered a mortise, mortise and tenon joint with a dovetail end. That's very interesting. So again, it's to introduce more, uh, it's more of a decorative joint along with being functional and strong. And we have, uh, ultimately, we have a double miter joint. Now this is uh, essentially what I've been saying is to introduce, uh, to attach a rail to somewhere along the top and in the middle of a post. And this is a combined tenon that fits into a, uh, a mortise along with having the miter component. So it's not just, uh, it doesn't just abut at the, uh, at the uh, corner, at the edge of the post, but it fits in and it's, uh, Again, it's more of a decorative thing. A few more steps involved in creating this, but once you've done them the first time or second time, it's, uh, it, you need to practice at this, at this type of form of joinery to be proficient at it, I find. And it's very easy to forget how to do this if you, have, if you don't do it often enough. So, so this is, uh, there's a few more steps involved. And this one's a nice joint. So I think that covered uh, almost everything here. All the forms of joinery that I use in my work. So again, the, the most important thing is to understand the, uh, the frame and panel. And it needs to be loose, it's somewhat loose along its, uh, its uh, width within the frame. So it expands and contracts because wood does move. Unless it's a, a man-made manufactured wood or something or material, then it doesn't really move much anyway. And then you can probably get away with uh, gluing it in or something, but I would not advise it. And then, uh, of course, the ubiquitous uh, loose tenon joiner. It's very common today and very popular. I tend to use it occasionally in my work for, uh, for creating uh, cabinet stands, mostly, reinforce them. It's uh, fairly good, well set up for that. I don't have a domino joiner, but, I, but I'm uh, well set up for that type of joinery. So, so I think this covers it. And, uh, the important thing with uh, with all this is to uh, pick a few joints that you're uh, and uh, work at them. Try to be successful in creating them and remember the steps because the fewer joints you uh, you're very good at, the better you, you you're able to re recreate the joint afterwards. Because of course, there's such a varied amount of joinery here, you'll never remember how to create each of these joints. You'll probably have to create a the number of steps or document the process each time. So it's better to just focus in on uh, fewer fewer joints, like a mortise and tenon dovetail, the, uh, the slip joints, 
and use them in your work and that's what that's what I tend to do I use maybe four joints in my work now I don't uh, these were done over a, over a period of time just to, uh, for educational purposes to describe how the joints work well, I do cover all this in my a few of my woodworking courses at woodskills.com my woodworking course and the design and making course the woodworking design and making which is quite comprehensive long course so I talk about all this at length again again practice and uh, become familiar with all this and uh, hopefully you'll uh, you'll be a better woodworker furniture maker with, uh, with some of this knowledge thank you for watching and uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel I do I'm doing a lot of this lately these form of videos more educational videos on on, uh, on different aspects of furniture making and woodworking this should uh, inspire you to create furniture to make furniture and uh, to watch somebody that's had a few years of experience uh, and what they do and how they create their furniture so, so uh, thank you